Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing a supporting character and a spine-chilling moment in The Half-Blood Prince where she's the victim of a brutal curse. Katie Bell was a British half-blood witch, born in the year 1979. She was a member of Gryffindor House and represented the house on the Quidditch pitch, taking on the role of Chaser. She was a year above Harry and we see her name mentioned here and there throughout the franchise. However, her character was never really brought to the forefront of our minds until the Half-Blood Prince when, while on a trip to Hogsmeade, Katie suffered a brutal attack from an unidentified curse, something that the trio witnessed firsthand. At once, Katie rose into the air, gracefully, her arms outstretched as though she was about to fly, yet there was something wrong, something eerie. Her hair whipped her by the fierce wind, but her eyes were closed and her face was quite empty of expression. Then. Six feet above the ground, Katie let out a terrible scream. Her eyes flew open, but whatever she could see, or whatever she was feeling, was clearly causing her terrible anguish. It was a truly bone-chilling, sinister moment that encapsulated the reality of dark magic, and it was a great example of the dark undertone that the books and films began to develop as they progressed. Katie's body was dragged and thrown around violently by what appeared to be some sort of invisible entity, and the trio could only look on in terror as Katie's body was viciously thrown to the ground. Hagrid shows up just in the nick of time to bring Katie's unconscious body to St. Mungo's, and it's there that people begin to discuss what exactly happened to Katie. Upon closer inspection, it quickly became clear that Katie was holding a cursed object, the opal necklace. Now, if you read the books, you probably have a slightly better understanding of the opal necklace and what it is. The films didn't really touch on it much, but there's actually some foreshadowing in The Chamber of Secrets. When Harry mistakenly enters Borgen and Burks in 1992, he sees the necklace on display with a warning label. Do not touch. Cursed has claimed the lives of 19 muggle owners to date. So what exactly happened to Katie? Why did she have a cursed necklace in the first place? While on her trip to Hogsmeade, Katie was actually placed under the Imperious Curse by the Three Broomsticks innkeeper, Madame Rosmerta, who was under the Imperious Curse herself, a curse administered by none other than Draco Malfoy. The film doesn't explain this particularly well. It certainly suggests that Malfoy is responsible, but doesn't divulge the minutiae of the situation. Katie was instructed to take the cursed opal necklace, which she finds inside the girl's bathroom, to Dumbledore. It was an assassination attempt. The only reason that Katie fell victim to the curse was because she argued with her friend Leanne about the package. This led to the package ripping and Katie coming into direct contact with the cursed object. The necklace possesses a very deadly curse, but you can only fall victim to its effects when you touch it directly. It appears that the more contact that is made, the more of an effect that it will have. Katie merely touched it through a small hole in her glove, and it took her six months to recover in St. Mungo's. It was a truly violent scene, and I can't even begin to imagine what it would have done to Dumbledore had he himself opened the package and touched it fully. It's untelling what curse the opal necklace actually possesses, but what immediately stuck out to me is the way that the cursed necklace resembles a horcrux. Horcruxes are objects in which a dark witch or wizard has imbued part of their soul, the purpose of which is to make it difficult for them to be completely killed. However, one of the most common properties of a horcrux is that it contains some sort of defense mechanism, a counter charm, curse, or jinx. We see this with Voldemort's horcruxes, and given the power of the opal necklace, I think that there's a case to be made for the opal necklace being a horcrux itself. It wouldn't be one of Voldemort's horcruxes, we know that, but I do have a theory for who it could belong to if it is in fact a horcrux. If you guys want me to make a video exploring that further, let me know down in the comment section below. That's it for this video, until next time, you're a wizard Harry.